authors Gail McAbee and John Kirsch, i.e. that's me, uh, are going to talk about collaborative fiction, collaborative writing, uh, something that many people don't really know much about or at least don't have a lot of firsthand experience on. And just kind of we're going to partly talk about our experiences, but then partly encourage you as a as a writer or any sort of creative person to embark on sort of take that leap and try collaboration because the rewards are very significant. So I guess just to start, Gail, what um, just to kind of give your bona fides a little bit here, you've had just a little collaborative experience. You want to talk about that just for a minute? <laughs> a couple of things. I collaborated with the glorious Tom Johnson, uh, who is a pulp historian and pulp writer. We created our own pulp hero. And in that co collaboration, I wrote the hero side, he wrote the villain side, and we would alternate chapters. I collaborated with Cindy Witherspoon on our Witchfinder series, which was a paranormal romance. I collaborated with uh, J.A. Johnson on The Seething, which is a zombie book, and The Nereus Project, which is a um, <laughs> deep sea monster creature adventure science fiction. And I've collaborated with you on Intelligence from the Abyss, so Giant Sea Monster, cool. Uh, the Many Lives of Bob Howard, a, an overview of what might have gone through Robert Howard's head. And then we're now working on Starbase Sanctuary, and we're thinking about a new one. Cool. SS. Now, I know you've collaborated with several other people, too. So tell us about yeah. them. So, so yeah, so my collaboration, I've, I've done collaboration like in nonfiction. I did uh, some stuff on library scholarship with a, a co-worker at the time named Olivia White. I'll name drop her if she ever sees this video. Um, <laughs> uh, but I've also collaborated, of course, um, Gail, you and I have collaborated on several projects. Also, we did a sort of a, an anthology together with two other writers, um, Tales from Omega Station, which was mm -hmm. a lot of fun to do. Um, so, I, you know, and I've had I've had successful and unsuccessful collaborations. So I've had when I was younger in my very early writing days, I had an unsuccessful collaboration. Uh, this was the, as for a senior writing project in high school. So that was my first taste of collaboration. So I'm glad I didn't let that first taste color my uh, my outlook on that. Um, and then let's see what else collaborative wise, um, you know, there's been other sort of minor collaborations over the years. Of course, my wife is an accomplished librarian and we've written some professional things together. So, you know, there's there's just been a lot of, you know, I, I've collaborated, you know, more than a few times and really, really found a lot of value from it. I would um, like to know how bad the first one was and why. Well, the nice thing, so the nice thing is my, my first, my bad collaboration actually was not that negative of an experience because it was mostly uh, my friend and I each had different visions for the story. And as a senior in high school, you have a lot of different competing things for, vying for your attention. And so we just we just sort of mutually decided it was easier for one of us to just chug chug ahead and leap forward and write the whole story. And he was totally on board with it. He said, you know mm -hmm. what? We brainstormed it together, but you sort of did the actual work. And I was willing to do that because I was psyched about the story and he was willing to do it because, well, we both needed the grade. <laughs> so right. it was more, more a time constraint issue. And even that, as, as negative as it was, uh, in the sense of it wasn't a true collaboration because he sort of defaulted out of it, um, mm -hmm. the brainstorming for that story, even though we didn't use the ideas, that was my first taste of like the what is the joy? What is the rush? The exhilaration of a good brainstorming session. So yeah, I, and see that that's something that I think few people understand about as even as writers and collaborate who who haven't collaborated is when you're brainstorming with somebody about a shared story you're creating together. That's on a whole nother level. That's that's on a level way above even just a writer brainstorming with a friend on ideas for their own story, um, which is cool, which is also really cool and can be a rush, but there's mm -hmm. like another, you know what I mean? There's like another next level aspect. Exactly, to it. exactly. And the point you made about sharing the vision, I think that's important because the, your first one, you didn't really share the same vision, even though you brainstormed together. You have to 
that's I think that's critical in a good collaboration that you have to share a, yeah. the same vision for the end result. Yeah. Uh, David Weber, I read a, a, an article on him, a, a re- interview of him, and he was talking about collaborating. And he said he collaborates because he knows the end product is going to be stronger than something he wrote by himself, not in every place, but certain sections, because every writer brings something different to the table. So I thought that was fascinating and very yeah. true, very perceptive. Yeah. Yeah, because when you collaborate, you not only you you learn about yourself more <laughs> and see where you can improve things by working with the other author. So for yes. example, a lot of times I would find areas of my own writing where I could improve based on seeing parts of your writing that were stronger, you know, mm-hmm. or, 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 you know, for example, um, I what, so. yes. like, oh. di- like dialogue, like when I was a, a newer writer, you know, collaborating with you on those, some of the early stuff, even Omega station made me realize, aha, I need more, a lot more dialogue in my stories. Mm-hmm. So even, even simple nuts and bolts stuff, you can have sort of eureka moments when mm-hmm. you collaborate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And just just like a brief a brief kind of footnote here, but what surprised me a little bit is given how generally few people collaborate or truly collaborate, or at least the perception that writing is a solitary thing. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what surprises me about that is if you actually look at the, the history of writing, like you go back to the Renaissance and in the Renaissance, actually collaboration was the norm, not the exception. You know, a lot of times playwrights would be writing new versions of other playwrights work and they would be asked to you know add a new chapter a new act to a play and it would i mean collaborations were actually like totally predominated Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's just Mm -hmm. funny to me that in today's world we see collaboration as sort of this aberration and it's really it shouldn't be Mm -mm. no no because we are we are communal tribal animals and we do better work when we work together but yeah, yeah we create things certainly but the shared creation is so much more of a thrill i think than than the even the individual creation yeah and the end product is almost always stronger yeah like whoever said Uh, that makes total sense and and it's funny because i think one reason that um sometimes people have a misperception about that is you have some pretty high profile examples of collaboration or attempts to expand that scope that haven't necessarily succeeded, but they've added a lot of new, new knowledge to what we know Mm -hmm. about writing. So Mm -hmm. for example, have you heard about, did you hear about, um, in 2007 penguin, uh, and a university together sponsored something called a million penguins. And the idea was a collaboratively written giant novel. Ooh. Think, think like it was basically NaNoWriMo, only uh-huh. everyone was working on the same story, the uh-huh. same book. Uh-huh. Oh, um, nice, nice. You know, back in the 30s, yeah. something similar to that, the Detection Club in England, uh, mm-hmm. Agatha Christie, Dorothy Lee Sayers, Marjorie Allingham, all the greats between the wars, they collaborated on a novel called, the, I think, something like The Admiral's Death or something, and each would write individual huh. chapters and try desperately to leave it on a cliffhanger so that the whoever took over next wouldn't would have to really scramble to get the book finished <laughs> it's an interesting book it really is i'll have to find you a copy i'd love to read it yeah it's it's i, I like things that sort of push the envelope on what collaboration can be mm-hmm. um, I, I mean today we're going to talk about collaboration more in the intimate sense of one or two or three people but um, that that Million Penguins project, it was intriguing to me how ambitious they tried to get with it. Um, and it, it, even though it was deemed sort of like a failure in terms of its own goals, which was the two main goals were, okay, let's do this, this giant collaborative novel so that we can create community and so that we can have some sort of semi-integrated story, you know. And of course, when you throw that many hundreds of writers together, you're not going to get a, a seamless integrated story. Uh, and... <laughs> And I guess by their own standards, there wasn't a sense of community, although I would argue maybe there were sub communities that maybe they just never noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, getting away, from, but, but getting back to the point, like I just feel like um, there is a desire for collaboration just kind of innately within all of us. Um, and I think it's more like a lot of the resistance to collaboration is more, I think, learned from our culture and society um, yes. more than anything. Yeah, the rugged individualist and you have to, you know, the whole frontier attitude and one person breaking ground. Yeah. Uh huh. But there's so many different reasons for collaboration. I was t- talking about this one 
earlier. It's an early science fiction novel. Uh, Frederick Pohl, brilliant editor, writer, he wrote 20,000 words on the novel and got stuck. So he turned it over to his friend, Cyril Cornbluth, and it broke through that barrier. So when Cornbluth jumped in there and did the next chunk of it, and then they were alternating the last few chapters, that's one way of collaborating and one reason for collaborating, you get stuck on something. Uh, J Jim Johnson and I got, he would, he had started on The Seething, the zombie book, and he got kind of stuck on it. So he handed it over to me and I kind of went in a different direction relating back to what he was doing. And then that broke the barrier. It, you know, it, mm -hmm. it pierced the dam, let's say, for, that was keeping you from going forward on the book. And I think a lot of times, collaboration works that way for writers well and it makes sense because if you think about it like any writer who truly has been writing for a long time realizes that a lot of time you don't see your own foibles and your own faults as a writer you know oh, you yeah. think of what you meant to say rather than what maybe you said you see and it so, on the page what you meant to say and not what you did yes <laughs> and awesome. yeah and so that's why you need that collaborator to keep you honest to see your your work more objectively than you see your work in a way mm -hmm. um so yeah. I, I mean i'm sure like you and jim like you you guys obviously play off of each other really well like and usually you, you don't you alternate chapters when you write is that how you generally yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's the way i did with uh tom jo tom johnson too must be a johnson thing I don't know. <laughs> you just apparently if the person's name is johnson but, you just collaborate with them i i can collaborate with them but yeah uh-huh they and that's what we would do but jim and i would plot it out first so we'd know what our chapter was supposed to be Tom, on the other hand, would write a chapter and leave a cliffhanger and say here. And that's also that's a different way of collaborating, but a really fun way of collaborating, too. So many different fun ways to collaborate. So in your opinion, what is I'm just curious, like if we were to give advice to someone who's never really collaborated before, would you say what's most important in terms of what should you look for in a writer to collaborate with? Is it most important just sort of shared interests, shared like whether that be in the same genre or the same types of stories? Is it writing style? What What do you think is like if there's one key component that you could say, what's the first thing someone should maybe look out for in a in a fellow writer to collaborate with? What What is that special thing, would you say? I think you want to be careful not to have a writer who says my way or the highway. You know, so some, a this spirit is of compromise. Do. Yes, there you have. You have to be able to compromise. You have to be able to discuss things and make decisions. And not everybody's going to have their decision. You know, you know, peak, but every time. But I think somebody yeah. who's who's convinced that they have the only story route, and um, they just want you there to help them write it. That's not collaboration. That's ghostwriting. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's a quote I need to, we need to put on a t-shirt. I love that. <laughs> so um, what do you think is important in collaboration though? I mean, I, I would agree with you in that, in what you just said, partly because I think one reason I enjoy compromise, I actually enjoy compromising when we're collaborating mm -hmm. is you'll suddenly take the story in a new direction or throw in a, a character or do something different with the story that kind of makes me go, whoa, what uh -huh. just happened there? And I, as a reader, that's what I want to experience. I don't want things predictable. So when when you make us change the story, I often welcome it, or I often think, "Hey, that's cool," because mm -hmm. I I mean, pre pre to me, predictability is one of the worst things you can have in a story. So, like just just by collaborating with you and your your font of ideas and and creative imagine your imagination just makes the story better in that way so yeah i think i think i think you're right about the compromise thing and the the willingness to be flexible mm -hmm. um is it has to be the most important thing because otherwise you can you can love the same genre you can write mm -hmm. in the same style you can mm -hmm. line up on everything else but mm -hmm. the foundation has to be that willingness to say hey you know i didn't even think about that idea but you know what let's go that route that sounds cool the styles so. can, can be tweaked to match up good enough. And especially if you're writing from different characters' viewpoints, a little bit of style difference is not going to make all that much difference. Yeah. But uh, knowing certain genres, yeah, 
but knowing other genres because you're bringing new stuff to the party, which is kind of nice too. But I think in the end, you know, it has to be a true collaboration and not a one person's driving and the other person's riding shotgun. Yeah, exactly. I, I was going to try to just give give viewers sort of like a, an example of of that um, mm -hmm. in terms of like with our own collaborations. Well, I, I think uh, so with Starbase Sanctuary, we had where I started the story and I thought it was going to be focused more on this neural pilot. She's, you know, trying to help defend humanity from alien invasion, but mm -hmm. she's injured. And so at the start of the story, she's back on Earth recuperation. I was going to focus on sort of what are things like on the home front during this interstellar war? And then you pulled us really right away. As soon as you kind of jumped on board with the story, suddenly I, the letter she was writing to her friend who was still out on the front lines in, in the, in fighting the aliens, suddenly the, the, the front became more the focus of the story. And we, so you pulled my story from my original vision of it into this much more dynamic uh conflict oriented you know what's you know what about the invasion itself and so uh i think in that way you strengthened the story and you made it much more interesting for the reader so i don't know that's just an example of where and and, and that's not even the best example i think there were other times where where i and I've, i know i've done the same to you so i should i should apologize yes, <laughs> yes you have like <laughs> i go wait wait we're doing what <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> um, but Sounds yeah, I mean, e even your idea of them writing letters back and forth was for me a t not something I'd ever done. And so, you know, if I hadn't been flexible, I could have said like, oh, well, you know, I don't do epistolary stories mm -hmm. or something like that. But instead I was like, no, this is cool. Let's try it. And we just kind of let it evolve from there. So, And, and that's the thing. You, s I think any book, well, me being a pantser, any book really evolves and grows over time. Like, you know, Tolkien said that the story grows in the telling. Mm, and that is yeah. that is the best description of writing anything that I have ever heard. Simple and exactly <laughs> right. It just grows in the telling. You tell it yeah. and then you tell it some more and it just grows. And that is every book, I think. Do you think that being a pantser makes you a better collaborator than say an outliner or a hardcore outliner? Ooh, ooh, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever worked with a hardcore outliner. <laughs> so I think I seem to, I think pantsers yeah. seem to be attracted to each other as collaborators. Do you think so? Oh, I, I think you're probably right. In fact, I could see, oh. I, I mean, I'm not going to try to offend the 50% of writers who are outliners here, but I, I could see how if you're in a big time, everything has to be planned out. Mm -hmm. I could see how that would engender like less compromise, less flexibility. And mm -hmm. there, there's certainly ways around that. I could see two outliners if they very much do that, you know, collaboratively, if the outlining process is done collaboratively, then mm -hmm. you're fine. Mm -hmm. I think you're fine. I, th I just think the outlining process would have to be, you know, integrated really well into the, into the collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. I see a long process of, of outlining before I, and I, my personal preference is to just start writing and see where it takes me. But again, yeah. that that's the way I write books. That's not the only way to write books. So, I, and just out of curiosity, obviously me, me and you, we're kind of on the pantsing end of the spectrum mm -hmm. as, as far as our collaborations. Uh, as far as your other collaborations with, with Tom Johnson and, and Jim and, and others, where would you, like, are any of those a little bit closer on the outlining first person? perspective yeah jim's a lot more of an outliner and so was cindy but i think it's they're more of a three or four chapters outlined and mm. then we know where we're heading for the end but not so yeah. much a rigid outline so that's See, good not sure i could work under a rigid outline <laughs> no. yeah and, and and those are more short term it sounds like rather than outlining the entire book so that's mm. that's sort of a different it is, thing. It is. It is. Yeah, what the um, next section should be about what. Yes, that kind of yeah. stuff. So not really an outlining. So a, a combination plotter pantser. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think so. I hope like our discussion, you know, my hope is that like if, if a 
writer is watching this, maybe they're encouraged. Maybe they've never, never done a collaboration before, and I hope they're encouraged to give it a try. Yeah. Um, so let, let me wrap this video up, and we'll then we'll do another sh more sort of specific video on some of our current collaborations and how that how those are working out. All right.